Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions, and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box? I am about to take a look at Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth, the latest Fantasy Flight Games Dungeon Delver, coming after Descent, Descent 2nd Edition, and Imperial Assault. Um, this is an app-driven game, cooperative, heard really good things about it, but I personally haven't seen one in person. I'm about to crack my copy. This was purchased by me. This is not a review copy. Fantasy Flight wasn't cool enough to send me a copy. Though Fantasy Flight, if you want to send me something in the future, I'd be happy to open it online. Uh, enough about me. You can find me everywhere on the internet at tabletopbellhop.com. You can find Fantasy Flight at fantasyflight.com. You can buy this pretty much everywhere on the internet. But check the show notes, and there'll be an Amazon link, and it'd be awesome if you bought it through that link, because that helps support the Tabletop Bellhop team. So, Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth. Not all those who wander are lost. There's a quote from Bilbo, I'm going to skip over that, and note that this is a fully cooperative board game of fantasy and adventure for one to five players. You and your friends take on the role of heroic characters from the Lord of the Rings, traveling through Middle-Earth to... Battle villainous foes, make courageous choices, and fight against the evil that threatens the land. With immersive campaign, an immersive campaign featuring branching narratives, multiple side quests, and a procedural map generation system, Journeys in Middle Earth is continually surprising and highly replayable. Interesting. Through the game's interwoven scenarios, you must work together to unravel mysteries, fight enemies, and further the story as you protect Middle Earth from encroaching darkness. Adventure awaits, etc. You don't need to know the rest. The important thing here to note is it does require a free digital companion app. So this, there is a chance, it will not be an evergreen game. Though I don't think apps are going to die anytime in the next five years or so. And you're probably perfectly fine and you're not going to want to play Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle Earth in ten years. Because it will be a much cooler game put out by Fantasy Flight then. But I know that is a concern for some people. So this does require the app. I obviously am not going to bring up the app. So now that I've cut the shrink off, we're going to tip down and take a look at what's in the box. All right, first of all, significant box. That's going to be a little rough to fit on my game shelf. A little thick. Don't know Gloomhaven. All right. Stop! All right, we got to stop. We got to stop the unboxing. All right. It's a single shot thing that says stop, and it probably says download the app. Yep, and again, it's warning you. This can't be played without a companion app. So this is the point where you, if you're upset about that, you put the lid back on and you return the game. And there's an ad for the digital version of the living card game. Fair. Fantasy Flight. Ad. Fair enough. Whatever. They come in all these. Then we have the rules. Typical of modern Fantasy Flight games... We have two books. We have a learn to play book and a rule reference. That's pretty much how they do everything now. Generally, you start with this, you read through this, you start playing, and then if you have any questions, you grab this book. That's been their format for a while. I haven't decided if I like it. I don't hate it. I guess it's better than reading one rule book and having the whole, here's the rules we haven't covered yet. So we're going to do a quick flip through of this rule book. Fantasy Flight's always been known for decent rule books with somewhat convoluted rules. Some of the the... Worst written out there and some of the best written out there. This one I can't compare. So far the font's a little tiny. I do see some text at the beginning, some uh, intro. A component list. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this box. This may be a long unboxing. I see a significant number of examples here. This is all first set up. Wow, I, I actually I dig this format. It's two column, where one column is the text of what to do and another column showing you how to do it. And that continues. I like that. So it looks like this might be a winner for a rule book. Font is a little tiny. Little tiny. I got old eyes. For most of you out there buying this game, that's probably fine. Significant number of examples. Looks good. I've never played a Fancy Flight game I couldn't learn, so... We are looking at... There's no page numbers on the rule book. There's 15 pages, plus a quick reference... That's always appreciated for the learn to play. So the basic rules of the game. Then we have the rules reference, which I expect to be quicker. This is going to detail all various sections. I see pictures of the app here. I'm going to flip through this one a little quicker than the last one. 
Yeah, this is going to be a lot more blocks of text because, well, this is the core concept of the rules. We're not trying to get fluff across here. We're just trying to explain what exactly, how you do a hero action. What is it step by step? You almost get into wargaming rules where you got like section 32.6. So this is all the detail. When you need a question, you look in here. I'm not even going to bother. Keep flipping. You don't need to see these page by page. What I will let you know is we are looking at index. That's awesome. Every game should have an index if it's more than 10 pages. Heck, more than 8 pages. We got some appendices. So we are looking at 31 pages with the index. Actual rules, 27. That's not a thin book. That's a lot of little details, but that's pretty typical of these games. Then we have punch board. Holy cow. We have punch boards. Look at that. That's a chunk. Uh, we'll take a look at those. And then the ever famous fantasy flight insert. I don't know why they even bother. Like, I guess it holds this up near the top. Like, come on. <laughs> I've never quite understood the, the, the purpose to that. We're going to open up these punch boards and go through them quick. They came out of the plastic well enough. I gotta say this game has a really unique aesthetic with a semi hex map. So you know they're hexagonal tiles, but like you're not on hexes, which I thought was really unique. It's the unique look. We got some kind of river here. So it looks like there'll be ways to modify it. We got some trees. No clue what these symbols are. Oh, nice thick punch boards. Two-sided, which is what I expected. The river is a wall on this side. Some of these bits might be useful for war game terrain too. If you're into that kind of thing. Oh, some underground. We got some in inside, so there's some dungeons. Everything's sliding. I like that. I thought it was all overland. That's cool. I haven't seen... Yeah, check out the dungeons. That's actually pretty cool. Now, you probably don't want to use these with your D&D games because you're not going to get the tactical combat, but might be a cool way to represent some dungeons and just general areas. There's some ruins. We got some banners here. Again, everything two-sided. Various tokens. Oh, that's like a loot bag. It looked like a tooth. I was looking at it upside down. When I hold it this way, I can tell that's a little gold bag. A lot of punch boards. A lot of punch boards. All right. Having not played the game, I have no clue, but I have to assume this is like for fighting out combats or something. No idea. Two of them, whatever they are. All right. Yeah, this is a fantasy flight game. Bases for standees. I don't know what get the standees. These are pretty typical. They've had these forever. Fantasy flights had these style of bases for a long time. This is going to be quicker to unbox than I thought, just because one of the things. So we have character cards. We'll go through those quick. Everything's nice and individually bagged. Uh, they've got the linen finish, which is a nice touch. So character cards with a bunch of stats there. Artwork on the card. Two-sided flavor text. And suggested start. Starting skills, it looks like. No, it's not the movie artwork. As you can obviously tell from Legolas, that one really sticks out. Actually, I like that Bilbo. And that's it. So, interestingly enough, I think it said it played five players. Two, three, four, five, six characters. Did it say five players? Two, three, four, five, six characters. Yet only plays five players. So that's interesting. There's always going to be one character that's not going to get used. Or maybe one of them is an NPC. I haven't actually played the game. So here's the part that made me say, look, it's a fantasy flight game. Look at all the hobbit sized cards. Holy cow. Like, look at that deck. It's nicer in a baggie though. I dig that. Look at that. That's two stacks of cards. I don't know how many that is. I'm sure it says in the box and in the book. All right. I'm going to crack this and try not to spill everything. We'll get back to the miniatures. Let's take a look at cards. Okay. We're going to crack this open. And I'm going to sort them by their backs quick as I can. Maybe Sean here can speed up our video. Just so you can see what we get. 
Wow, I did a pretty good call. So we have these with the, the money bag on them. And I'll show you what the cards look like in a sec. We got blue, it looks like shadows or people chanting. We got rings. Gotta have rings. An awful lot of rings. Wow. Okay. Ring cards. We got, it looks like monster slashy cards or wound cards or something. We'll see when I see the other side. Maybe I could tell better. There's quite a few of those. Oh, then I got more rings. Which I don't see anything different about, so I'm going to put those together. I might hate myself later if I learn that they're two different types later. That's a significant stack. So that's one baggie's worth of cards. Here's the other baggie. These are different than what we had before. Hands, yep. Yeah. So we have hands. We have green. I have no idea. It's like a person with their arms crossed. They're talking out of character in a World of Darkness game. Here's a deep cut RPG reference for you. Um, we have armor. So this is probably different equipment. Stuff that you can hold in your hands. Stuff that you can wear. That's my guess. I have no idea. Then we have locations. There's some peaks here. And holy cow, more ring cards. Wow. Don't tell me the rest of these are ring cards. Wow. Okay, if you want randomness and variety. Jesus. Okay, look how big this stack's going to be. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> All right. Baggy. Um, I said it looks like equipment cards or something. And sure enough, that's what it looks like. So we got a torch there. I'm going to grab a random pack here. Well, they're all actually unique, too. So this is torch. You and other heroes ignore darkness. But then there's a weather top torch that actually has different rules. You and other heroes in your space ignore darkness. If attacking enemy in your space, you must deplete this item, which I'm sure means tap. I'm going to grab just some random ones here. Artwork's fine. It's small. Artwork's very small. Text is very small. The Mark of Arnor. There you go. Whole bunch of items. Nice, significant stack of those. Then we'll move into these. Ill Will. Looming Shadows. These are obviously bad things. Rage. Anxiety. Gloom. So these might be status effects. Trying to get that. That's the Ill Will card. I'll just go through three of these. Artwork's good for what it is, but man, tiny. Tiny little cards. So that's three of those. That's that deck. I'm going to save the ring deck for last. We got this, which I said kind of look like wounds. Let's see. What's this say? Cursed injury. Dazed. Poison. Stunned. Knocked prone. So those are definitely like damaging status effects. Cards are very distinct, so just to compare those to an item card, you can definitely tell them apart at a quick glance, or to even the blue cards. They're a little harder to tell, but there is differences with the symbol at the bottom. We'll go through a few of those. Artwork's good for how tiny it is. Like, tiny. Green cards. Uh, fire pit. Barrels. That's the fire pit. There's a river. So these are the rules for the different types of terrain. Next, we've got what looks like armor. And sure enough, it is. It's a armor. So it looks like all the stuff you equip, the um, arts at the bottom of the cards. And I'm dropping cards. Then we got green stuff. Hidden emboldened so again we have these are probably positive benefits so we have a hidden card this one says emboldened with some rules on the bottom then we have the hands which is probably going to be stuff you equip yep sure enough and again arts on the bottom so stuff you equip arts on the bottom twerks again artwork's great for something so tiny all right, these ring cards. What's up with these? What is, what is with this ridiculously huge deck of ring cards? Let's cut the deck. 
We're going to take a look. I'm going to guess these are some kind of encounters. So this says, Grim Resolve. When you are a hero and your space performs the last stand, you may discard this skill. So there's skills. Wow, that's a lot of skills. So these do look different. They have symbols on the side. Kind of like keywords. We'll cut that again. I want to make sure I keep these in order just in case. So there are a ton of these ring cards. A, a ridiculous number of these ring cards. I have no idea. Some of these have two symbols in the top corner. Some have more. Um, there's a ton of them. So that's it. Four cards. We're going to put these back in the baggie just because I don't want them going loose in the box. I'm just going to put all the rings in one bag. I appreciate the bags, Fantasy Flight. That's nice. I'm going to put all these together in the other bag. Then we'll get back to miniatures. People love their minis. It's a lot of cards. That's it's a lot of cards. All right, back over here. Good guys. All right, I do apologize. My camera does not always want to focus in. I hope it does. That's a nice mini. And what's really nice to see after the last game I unboxed that is fully assembled, out of the box, take it out, play, good to go. That's a nice mini. Lots of detail, dynamic pose, not just standing there. I have to assume that that looked like a strider, but maybe not. I dig it. Nice mini. Really nice mini. I'm sure everyone could probably guess who that is. So what you do is you take the artwork for this game, but you paint them up so they look like the movies. Oh, that's a nice dwarf. I like that dwarf. I don't know. I've always had a soft spot for dwarves in fantasy games. Two more to go. I'm not sure who this tiny guy is. No. <laughs> How many people out there point it, paint it so the sting is glowing blue? One more. I dig them. Nice minis. No complaints at all. I don't see any mold lines. Yeah, I'm looking at this up close. I don't see mold lines, anything I need to clean. Really nice. Impressive minis. Poses are distinct enough. They'd be easy to tell apart on the table, far apart, even unpainted. All right. Bad guys. Baddies. See you again. Fancy flight. Come on. You know you use the same divider when you got this thing in here. What's this supposed to do in this box? Get a new insert. All right. Baddies. We're going to go through these a little quicker. I don't know. It looks like some kind of Urukai or Orc. These, the camera's not going to pick up as well because they're dark. I'm just going to dump them. See if I can find it. Oh, nice warg. That is a really nice warg mini. That's impressive. More wargs. What do we got? Looks like some kind of undead or wraith. Nice tattered robes there. Nice minis overall. Impressive. Ah, look at that. That's nice. Troll, I'm assuming. Really nice. Impressive. Most impressive. Uh, I had maybe another orc with axes. We got wargs. I'm not gonna. Looks like more like a goblin in this case. Skinnier than the orc. Nice, wicked, curved blade. Uh, that's another goblin. Actually, they're not unique. Okay, so we are duplicating some. We got different, same orc, same goblin, same undead. What's interesting, undead's actually missing a chunk in his middle. It's a cool touch. Orc with axes, we already did that. We've seen that one. Oh, here we go, an archer. Dig the minis, really do. Overall, really nice minis. We've seen him, we've seen that. We've seen that, 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 we've seen that. We've seen that. All right, looks like that might be all the different types. I can't remember if I held this one up, just in case I didn't. 
with the axes. Very cool. I don't see a ring race or anything like that, but I'm guessing that's probably a little advanced for a base game. Now I'm going to double check, make sure there's nothing in here. Because sometimes they hide stuff. No, nothing here. Oh, I missed a... Nothing here. Personally, that's where I like to store the miniatures in these boxes. I hide them under here. And then I put all the other stuff, the cards, in the middle. I am not going to bother putting these back into bags. We're just going to toss those in there. Because that's what you do with a Fantasy Flight game. Is you baggy everything and just toss it in loose. No extra baggies. So, thumbs down on that. No extra baggies is bad. Well, I got one left here. But once I punch all this stuff, where the heck's it all going to go? Loose in here? I don't think so. And then, also, once it's punched, there's no need for this, right? Like, at all. That's a Fantasy Flight problem, though, and it's current in every one of their games. You know when you're buying a Fantasy Flight game, you are getting one of the most disappointing box inserts on the planet. It is a given. I'm going to keep this out. There's no reason for me to throw that back in there. I'm going to keep this just because it's got the stop, and it's probably got how to get the app and a QR code. Looks cool. Miniatures are way more impressive than I expected, actually. That was a highlight for me. Board pieces, too. I thought they were all overland. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle Earth, Fantasy Flight Games. You just got to see what's in the box. Best looking thing in there is those miniatures. Really impressed by those. The hero miniatures are fantastic. I'd, I'd take those, use them in a role-playing game easily. Uh, throw that. That could be your D&D &D character, your Journeys of Middle Earth character. Or not Journeys of Middle Earth. This is Journeys of Middle Earth. What is the RPG called? I can't remember now. Cubicle 7 puts it out. Whatever the RPG is called, I'd still use those miniatures. Throw them in for any fantasy game. Overland tiles are cool. Like, I knew they were hex shapes, but I thought they were hexes. And they're not. They're not actually hexes. They're just hex areas. And they hex together. But they're not actual, like, square by square hexes. It was cool to see that there were some dungeons and internal stuff. Inside rooms and stuff like that. Not just overland. So that's cool. Um, rule book. Surprisingly thick for a game that has to use an app. So very much unlike the XCOM board game, which I hated because the XCOM board game didn't have a rule book. It literally just had, go download the app, and you'd, you'd have to play through the app and hit next, 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 while well, it taught you the rules. I like to sit by myself at a coffee shop and read rule books, not sit and read something on my tablet or on my phone. So I love the fact that they included a full rule book as well. Now, what I'm hoping is all the rules are in the rule book, and I don't need both. I'd, that'd be terrible. If I need to use the app and the rule book, I'd be disappointed. So looking forward to checking this one out. Um, when I do, follow me on social media, Tabletop Bellhop, one word everywhere. Twitter, slash Tabletop Bellhop. Facebook, slash Tabletop Bellhop. Pinterest, slash Tabletop Bellhop. Everywhere. Tabletop Bellhop, one word. I'll be sure to be talking about this game when I do play it. I don't think it's going to be soon. We're currently in the middle of a Gloomhaven campaign, so I've got one campaign going, going, one fantasy campaign game going. So I'm probably not going to dive into this too soon, but I do want to get into it at some point. Um, it is worth noting, a lot of our uh, unboxing videos were provided by the companies. This was not. I bought this one myself, so these are all my thoughts. For fantasy Flight, though, if you do want to get a hold of me, it's mo at tabletopbellhop.com. I'll happily open every game you make. Uh, so for Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. If you dig this video, be sure to hit subscribe, check out other stuff on our channels, and make sure to head over to TabletopBellhop.com to see some other content, including a podcast, which we record Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash TabletopBellhop. And there we answer your gaming questions. If you got a question, send it to questions at TabletopBellhop.com. The last thing it'd be awesome if you did is head it over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on. <laughs>